Hello everyone and welcome to a little project video where we're going to be making a yin yang style of bird bath. For this project we're going to need a roughly 28 cm terracotta dish. These are easy to find at garden centres and they're for use underneath plant pots, but if at all possible do try to get one that's frost proof otherwise you're going to need to bring your bird bath in over the winter. One to two inches deep is ideal for small birds as well. You're also going to need a selection of green tiles, a selection of purple tiles, or any colour of tiles to be honest, some PVA glue, a protractor, a pencil and a ruler, a bowl and spoon for mixing your grout, some black and white grout, or grey if you happen to have a premix, and some nippers for whichever type of tile you are using. And first off we're going to need to draw the yin yang on our dish. Now likely chances are your dish has manufacturing marks on it which will show you roughly where the centre is, but if not then you can just use the ruler to find the widest point across the dish, take that measurement, halve it and that's going to be your centre point. Once you have the centre, use the ruler to measure out the radius of the dish, that's the distance between the centre point and any of the outer edges. Take that value, halve it, and then mark it just there, and that's going to be the middle of your radius. Then place your ruler between the mark that you've just made, and going back through the centre point, you need to make a third mark on the other side of the dish, in the middle of the radius again, same place you've just made the other mark. This way you're going to end up with three dots on your dish, one in the centre, and two halfway between the centre and the outer edge on either side. Then you can take your protractor and place the pointy bit so that it's on one of your outer dots. You're not going to be able to pierce the terracotta, and so you are just going to have to sort of hold it in place. But you can do that and then very carefully draw a half circle starting from the centre mark going around to the outer edge of your dish. Then you can spin your dish around and repeat this for the other side so that you now have half a circle going in the opposite direction. You may need to play around a little bit with this to get it just right, but remember you can always just erase any pencil lines that you don't like, and they're all going to get hidden underneath the tiles anyway. But once you have drawn your outline, then we can start thinking about our tiles. Now, the most important part of this is the curve that runs down the centre between the two colours. We need this to really stand out as much as possible in order for the shapes to be nice and clear. And so to help this, what I've done is I've used two different sizes and styles of tiles. The smaller purple ones against those larger stained glass ones. Both are still just squares, and this is good because I want the curved edge to be as obvious and as easy to follow as possible. But changing up the size of the tiles just helps the two sides of the yin yang to stand out from each other that little bit more. You could outline the shapes in black if you wanted to, but that might make your dish look a little bit on the cartoony side. And also to help your design to really stand out, make sure you take your time when completing the points. Try to make sure you keep those lines as smooth as possible. But once the outlines are complete, you can glue these tiles down. Take your time here again, just to get them spaced as perfectly apart as you possibly can, because you will notice mistakes around the edges of a shape much quicker than you will on the filling. Once the outline is done though, then you can move on to that filling. You can use absolutely any size, shape and types of tiles for this, though do try to keep the gaps between them as small as possible because you want the colour to look solid. Yin Yang often have these contrasting dots in the centre of them as well, and for those I'm using 18mm Ottoman rounds in order to create them. Then I can fill in the rest of the shape following the outline. Where the space gets really really tight in the centre, then I'm just going to fill it in using darling dots. And even so, these are still a little bit big for how small the space is. And so they're going to have to be cut down to size, just so that I can keep those gaps between them as small as possible. And you can either stick your tiles down as you go along as you do this project, or you can fill in the entire space and then lift and glue each tile individual once you already know where it's going to be. Either way though, once all of your tiles are stuck down in place, put your mosaic to one side in order for it to completely dry before you move on to doing the grouting. And for the grout, we are going to mix up a pale to medium grey with a roughly two thirds white grout to one third of black. Then you can add just enough water to bring your mixture together into a thick paste that is somewhere in between custard and toothpaste. You want it to be easy to work with, but it's not going to run. And once you're confident your tiles have completely dried, there is no risk they're going to move around at all, then you can apply your grout. 
as I've cut barely any of these tiles, I'm perfectly confident doing so just using my fingers, but if you do have a lot of cut glass then make sure you're wearing gloves. And you can just blob the grout on. Press it in between all of the little gaps between the tiles with your fingers, making sure you don't leave any gaps or bubbles anywhere. But completely slather the mosaic in grout. Don't worry about the edges of the terracotta dish neither. These can easily be wiped clean later on with a damp cloth. For now though, once we are confident every single bit of this mosaic is now completely covered in grout, then we need to remove the excess from the tops of the tiles. We're not aiming for a neat finish here at all, we are just removing as much of the excess as we can. You can also remove excess grout now from around the edges of the dish, and do try to get as much of this up as possible while it's wet, just to reduce the risk of the grout staining the terracotta. Once you have removed as much as possible, leaving only a slight film over the tops of the tiles, place the mosaic to one side and allow it to dry. And now you can come back and give your piece its final clean. Again, using a damp cloth, go over all of the mosaics, every single one of them, checking between those tiles, making sure you're only leaving grout where it's supposed to be. And take your time here, because this is going to be the final piece. And also, take extra care when going over the points, making sure they are really standing out nice and strongly. And once buffed and dry, your mosaic is now complete to use, though. Once filled with water, the shallow dish is perfect for little birds to bathe in, and you can also still use it as a pot stand. Anywho, though, I hope you've enjoyed this little tutorial. Happy crafting, everyone, and I will see you soon.